hello and welcome everybody today i'll show you how to install oracle in your linux machine so the first step is after you have downloaded the software you will get two files so the first step is to unzip the files you need to unzip the two files so let's unzip it so after unzipping you will get a single folder known as database so let's first unzip the first file so let's unzip the second file so after unzipping the files you will get a single folder known, known as database so these are all your installation files let's go to the next step the next step is to edit the etc hosts file here we need to give the oracle host name that is your fully qualified machine name in the etc hosts file so you have this is the format of that file first is your ip address that is your machine name dot local domain is your domain name and last is your machine name so let's add this into the etc host file so that's added let's save it the third step is you need to edit the kernel parameters oracle have some recommendation for the kernel parameters oracle have recommended some values for the kernel parameters so we have to set the kernel parameters according to oracle so let's edit this let's check etc sysctl.com file is the para kernel parameters file so let's check there are some parameters which will be present kernel shmol it is the same kernel shmax it is the same so we will add the remaining kernel parameters which are not there so we are adding the kernel parameters so this all your kernel parameters are added let's save the file once you have saved the file you need to type in the command sys ctl space hyphen p to write the changes to the kernel so here we go the you can see the all the parameters are written onto the kernel so the next step is to edit the limits.com file here limit.conf file is to limit the user processes so here what we are doing is here soft means we are creating a warning and your hard means here the maximum limit so here we are setting for oracle user 2047 means at 2047 it will issue an warning and the limit which we are setting is 16384 for user oracle so let's add this into the limits.com file So once you have added it will limit the oracle user for these many number of processes the next step is to check the dependencies for oracle so for oracle installation you need this many number of rpm packages to be present so let's check it one by one 
कमांड फॉर चेकिंग इज आर पी एम हाइफन क्यू ए ग्रेप हाइफन आई एंड योर आर पी एम पैकेज नेम सो इट विल लिस्ट इफ इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम येस इट इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस वे यू नीड टू चेक वन बाय वन ऑल दी फाइल्स एंड इफ दैट ऑल दी आर पी एम्स एंड इफ इट इज नॉट प्रेजेंट यू नीड टू डाउनलोड इट एंड इंस्टॉल इट सो आई चेक इट वन बाय वन दियर वॉट आई डन इज आई हैव ऑलरेडी चेक ऑल दी dependencies and which were not present i have already installed it so if you don't have you can download it and you can install it using rpm hyphen ibh and your package name dot rpm so let's move on to the next step so the next step is to we have to add some groups to oracle o install dba operational and asm admin so let's add it one by one so here here we are adding the groups for oracle <coughs> so the next thing is to you need to add an oracle user and assign o install as the primary group and the remaining three as the secondary groups so the command for this is listed below so let's use it we are adding a user oracle and assigning o install as the primary group and remaining as the secondary groups so let now let's set the password for oracle the next step is to disable the ac linux so it is it can be edited use in the slash etc slash ac linux config file so let's edit that config file for ac linux and make ac linux is equal to disabled now you need to create directories where you will install oracle so you need to create some directories so we i will make some new directories for oracle with slash oracle will be your oracle base and your complete path will be your oracle home so let's add the directories here we are changing the ownership of the oracle directory to oracle user and group as o install mm, so we are not in the path where oracle is so let's change the path first so we have assigned the oracle a new owner and the next thing we need to do is we, you need also to change the permissions so we are giving oracle and the group as the read write and execute permissions your 7 7 stand for read write and execute so you are setting the permissions for the oracle directory read write and execute permissions so the next step is to you need to log in into the gui as the root user and typing the xhost command xhost plus your machine name so we'll typing xhost by this by doing this you are allowing this machine to access the x server so we will add this machine to the so it is showing that ol511gr2 being added to access control list so so the next step is to edit your bash profile of the oracle user so this is the bash profile which we need to set here if you can see you can see the host name if you remember we have added this in the slash etc slash hosts file also so please remember to make sure that both are same the second thing is the oracle base that is the slash oracle and followed by the oracle home this is the oracle sid you need to make sure that while you are creating a database you need to create the sid with the same name which you have created 
So let edit the edit the bash profile of the Oracle user. Let's add the settings. So once you have added right and do the dot dot slash dot bash underscore profile this will reset your bash profile so now the next step is to open your machine and open the GUI if you are not having the GUI you can open through a VNC if you are having a remote machine and run the run installer file using an oracle user so I am having a remote machine so I will open it using VNC if you don't know how to configure VNC you can watch my video on the channel where it is shown how to configure the VNC so let's run the run installer file once you run the run installer file it will do some prerequisite checks like it will check the temp space, swap space so all of the things are passed so this will start your oracle installation so here we will select we don't want any email to be configured so we don't want any support because we don't have it here you can configure a database here itself create a database here itself or either you can only install a software and create a database later so I'll create a database later Sing, here you can select the languages you can select there are three types enterprise standard standard one I'll select enterprise hit next here this is your oracle base if you know which you added previously this is your oracle home so I'll hit next that is your groups which you have added so your oracle administration group your operational group it will hit next so it will do some prerequisite checks so if you have not done so you can see that the physical memory which is 1 GB required and it which is some somewhat less so it doesn't matter anything so if you have not done any binary installations or you have not done the kernel parameters it will show here so this is the summary we will hit next so that starts your database installation so after finishing your database installation you need to run a root dot sh script which is present in the oracle home so that's there you need to run the script through the root user so let's run that script so we'll go to the oracle home and run that script sh root.sh so you can see here you can entering the full name for the local build directory so hit enter for that leave it as it is so you can see if their db home already existed so i've i had a previous installation that's why that file is still there so it is asking me to override it if you are doing a new installation it will not ask for that it will directly create that file so it is finished so your oracle installation com is completed but we have only installed the oracle software so so we have done the oracle installation only but we have not created or configured any database so let's configure a database you need to configure a database using dbca dbca binary is present in your oracle home slash bin so we'll go to the bin directory in oracle home and run the dbca binary this will start your database configuration assistant so hit next here you can manage your database create delete even modify your database so I'll create a database first that's your general purpose transaction database so here you have to give your oracle SID so you have given the SID as test DB in the oracle bash profile so we'll give the same here you can select any of the thing but I'll leave it as default so here no need to select this you need to give the password you can assign the password separately but I'll give the both users the same password 
yes leave these changes as it is here you can select the flash recovery area you can increase it decrease it you can archive it i'll create some campus schemas campus schemas so here you can uh, set the sga and pga size if you want but i'll leave it as default here you can select the default character set if you want to support different kind of languages you can select it from here but i'll use the default one here you can you have shared connection is there i have a dedicated connection so i'll hit next so once it is done it will show the summary so select this hit next so it will show the summary of your database creation it will show all the options which you have selected here so hit okay your database con creation will start one so it's completed you can see your log file is in this folder your oracle sid your oracle global database name so i'll hit okay that's com that completes your do oracle database creation also but post installation you need to edit some file that is the aura tab file so let's see what's there in aura tab file so if you make this flag as y you are telling you need that you want to if you want your oracle to come up at the boot time when your system boots you need to set that flag to y so let's check that file and set the last flag to y we are setting this to make the oracle make the database which we have created that the test db to come up at the time of the boot so i'll replace it with y i'll save that file that is your test database so our test database will come up when the os boots so let's check if everything is working or not login we can we will log into the oracle database using sql plus logging it in as sys dba enter the password so that's where you are connected to the oracle database it is showing that so your everything is working fine so that finishes your oracle installation so everything is working you have successfully configured the database and that's it thanks for watching my video if you are interested in more videos you can log on to my facebook youtube channel www.youtube.com/technologylayer